Hello, hello. All right, welcome back. Here I'm going to play a game. I was really in the mood for Christmas cake. So with that in mind, I googled online some Christmas cake recipes until I found something that suited what I was looking for. So popping up to the store, I went and got a few things. Some prunes, apricots, some dates, some raisins, got some glazed cherries, some lemon rinds, raw sugar, some butter, and some white flour. I got some gingerbread spices just to cut down on all the other separate spices that are on the recipe, and of course, some cheap brandy. Then, mixing all the fruit into a bowl, I was aiming at about a kilogram of fruit. Having to cut it up into small pieces, because the big fruit pieces in the cake are not so nice, but the little pieces work very nicely. Alright, let's chuck everything together into a pot, add the uh, brandy, you can use whiskey, you can use rum, you can use whatever you choose here, even port, about 150 milliliters, 250 grams of butter, and about 200 grams of sugar. Then we will bring that up to a rather rapid boil and then let it slow boil for about 5-10 um, minutes. When you reckon you've boiled it long enough, put it into a dish just to let it cool down. And then we're going to work on the dry ingredients. Here we've got our flour, the spices, we're going to mix it all together, a little bit of baking powder, about half a teaspoon of baking powder, and then four eggs are going to go into there. Mind you, you don't want to shell, do you save yourself those, otherwise it's a bit too crunchy. Mix it all together. Here you can add some vanilla essence or some rum essence as well. Your choices are well open to you. Only once the fruit has really cooled down can you now add your mixed flour because if you add it too soon you wind up cooking your eggs and that's not what you want to do at this point that comes later so do mix it all up nicely until you've got quite a mixture sort of like this it looks very sloppy but that's just perfect then get yourself an oven proof dish this one fits nicely inside the air fryer so I'll use that put some baking paper in it because you don't want it sticking and fill it up this of course was an experiment for me, so I can see I've got too much fruit there, but that just means I'll make two cakes, so we'll do the one at a time. Alright, then pop this one inside the air fryer. And set it at about 130 degrees for 45 minutes because we'll then check it off that and see what we have. Once time has gone past, you can see it's a little bit moist still. Let's do the stab test. Temperature is doing okay, but I can still feel it's a little bit sticky, so I'm going to put it in for another 15 minutes but on a slightly higher temperature, 150 degrees. After that 15 minutes, it really does look nice, feels a lot firmer. Putting the temperature gauge inside, I see that I'm getting to about 180 degrees Celsius, 74, 75 degrees Celsius. It looks a lot cleaner, it's not sticking to the side of the pen, so I presume everything is nicely cooked inside there. So I'm going to take that out, put that onto a cooling tray, and then just let it cool down. I think at this point I'll just keep quiet and I'll let the pictures do the talking. 
I must say that I then ate this particular cake and was good. Had to go back for seconds. You can't feed the cake over time but by giving it a shot of whiskey every second night uh, just to help preserve it as well as really get a, a strong alcoholic cake if you like but you do not need to do this i tend to like eating my christmas cakes warm with a custard over the top others prefer a cooler with uh, maybe cream or maybe just like that as it is but that's up to you to play with your cake your choice